Hello everyone and welcome back to Troll School. This week we're going to be looking at the Bouncy Bouncy Springs or the trampolines that are in Mario Maker. There are a few interesting uses for them for troll levels um, but I've definitely saved what I feel is my favourite till last um, just because of the way it works. So obviously there's not a lot to say about springs. They make you bounce. You can either jump on them and just bounce up and down or you can hold jump and you can jump a little bit higher. Enemies will bounce on them, and as you can see, Galoombas will just bounce straight over them. Um, and Thwomps seem to bounce off them as well. It's a bit of a weird interaction with Thwomps that you get. If you put a second spring underneath an enemy, it will double bounce the enemy so they go even higher. It is also worth noting that in every game mode in which you can pick up items, you can pick up a spring. And that includes Super Mario Bros. 1 theme, where if you have an SMB2 mushroom, you can use that to pick up a horizontal spring. And the only way that you can pick up a horizontal spring. Uh, so, using the knowledge that they can spring enemies, you can use it to clear paths. Uh, so, if you create a troll around how you get the spring, or whether you need the spring or not, you can then use that to bounce a muncher out of the way. Um, in this instance, it will clear the bomb above it. And in this instance, you'll actually need to uh, time the second jump to get it all the way up the top there and out of your way. Of course, one great use of springs in troll levels is to have them come up off the screen and move the player in ways that they are not expecting. Um, these two here as prime examples, although not particularly well hidden. Do remember if you are going to do this with springs that a vertical spring can be taken off its tracks and picked up by the player. Timing these so that they do hit the player when the player is running towards them is quite a challenge um, and one way to really get around that is to give the player a controlled speed. So using this example, we'll use a thwomp to control speed. So first running into that spring as it reveals itself from below the ground. And if you avoid that first spring, the second spring may just bounce you up into this section here. Obviously I jumped there because I got the timings are not quite right. Um, thus trapping you in this one way with only the spikes as your way out. So as I was saying, a little bit of scroll lock, you can hide these springs, avoid that one. Um, and then this thump will actually pin you into the back here and you'll be trapped in this room for eternity with this mean mean thump. Because the correct answer was to take uh, guidance from this second spring and make your way up here. That thump will release the fireball, triggering this bubble on and dropping him to reveal the way forwards. So that's one way that you can use springs and trampolines. Um, another way is to set up mechanisms like this, and I'm not going to go into specific examples of trolls with this. Um, I'm only going to show you one of my preferred areas, and there's a reason specific to that that I'm in Super Mario Bros. World theme. Um, but the springs obviously start the shells moving. A setup like this um, creates a timer initially for that first on-off switch, um, but the way that SMB, uh, SMW sorry, works is that the blocks eventually stop spinning which causes the block to create an almost random sequence of on off changing um, as you can see that green shell not being consistent in the amount of time it takes to hit that on off block you can also get this situation here which is one of my favourites um, the green shell slowly breaks its way through um, but just before it hits the on off block the first block stops spinning and prevents the green shell hitting it again so you can make some interesting on off um, trolls around that about making the players wait in certain positions for the on off that never comes. Finally you have this one which gives you an uneven on off balance. Um, so it's a super fast conveyor belt going towards one of these switches um, and it will make it be either off for longer or on for longer depending on which way the conveyor belt is going. But now for one of my favourite things with springs, and it's how they interact with doors. Um, so if you put a spring above a door, it will drop down and push Mario to one side. So here, it will push me aside. Easy peasy, there's no way coming back from it. Um, and it will tend to push the player to the right. So you can give them situations like this, where if they're not quick enough, the spring will bounce them to the right, and now they're stuck. And they have to take the death to get out of it. However, if you hold left as you go through, you can make it through with plenty of free time. 
And using that, you can create some really interesting situations. So here, look at this hangbagger. You got a key and a key door. Where is the way to get this key? So you move on to the next stage of the level, um, and you find this section here, which immediately bounces you out, taking your eye as to what threats are ahead of you, and you may have missed something going on on the screen. Um, but you can in fact see the key and a not very well hidden one way behind it. So I'll start with the solution and then I'll go through why I think this makes a good troll setup. So the solution is, is that whilst you were being bounced away from the door, something happened just off screen, um, which changed the on off state. So now if you go back through this door, you'll find you can collect the key and of course proceed through the level. Now the reason I personally think this is such a good idea is that there's so much for the player to be looking at that the SMB mushroom can do. Um, whether it's to go and proceed forwards and kill the pal and go on forwards, you can see more level that way, so why wouldn't you? It seems like the logical stage. So having accidentally lost my power up, I could hit this pal block here. Um, oh no, a big fireball has formed and this has dropped a muncher here, blocking my path to this section. Now in this example, that path blockade doesn't matter at all, but it's just an idea on how you can prevent certain actions happening on your level. So the next way to look at this is to proceed through with the SMB2 power up. You can pick this power up, clear that muncher without having this muncher come down. You can kill that muncher if you fancy it. Um, and then you have some clouds. So you can pull them up to proceed through the level. Um, unfortunately, I got a bit too excited. Um, and the troll there was whether you are to collect the fire flower or not. Um, obviously the answer is no because there is a plan down here on how you're going to move those ice blocks. Had you have picked up the fire flower you wouldn't be able to proceed past this part here. Um, where you now absolutely need a power block. You cannot proceed without activating that muncher. Um, I've set it up so that there is no way to get through this gap without hitting that note block which is what spawns the muncher. Um, and here to get the power block you have to lift up a spring so it showed the player they can lift up horizontal springs they clear the way they get their key but they lose their SMB2 power up and then see the spring blocking the door obviously unable to do anything with it apart from go through this section again maybe this time picking up the uh, the fire flower it of course makes no difference because they are now stuck in this section so once again the correct answer grab the smb2 power up clear your own path to the door which you learn over there and then make your way back off screen the on off is activated giving you access to the key um, and allowing you to proceed through the level in this section it's just another similar sort of thing with the smb2 mushroom where you can put the sp spring in front of a pipe to proceed. So sticking with a couple of points I made about the player waiting here to get up to that stage you have to get a super jump but the spring is time to kill the player. I'll do that again because it happens quite fast. You jump up, you collect your SMB2 mushroom and you start charging your super jump only to be knocked into the horrible poison swamp. And there's nothing special about that spring it is just on a timer. I worked out how long it takes for the player to get there and then if they miss that one the second one comes if they try to charge afterwards. With those springs gone, you can proceed through the level. So, as this stuff discussed, having things happen quickly as you go through doors with springs is really good fun. Um, so, I'm just going to walk through this door here, and what will happen is a spring will immediately push Luigi to one side. What that does, however, is it pushes that dry bone shell as well, which is actually positioned next to the door just through here. Um, so, it appears like you've kicked the dry bone shell, um, and now it's broken, so you can't actually get across to this door and all that's left to do is kill yourself on this muncher. Of course you can in fact lift the spring um, to give you that extra little bit of height you need to make your way up here. Um, just as a fun side note, you can actually throw springs at thwomps um, to move them around the stage as well. But I mainly use them in front of doors like this as an SMB2 check as well. It's a really good little item way to, uh, little way to use this item with the power up. So again, here is another example of requiring that spring. So obviously you've got the SMB2 power up up there that goes to nowhere. Um, and there's an SMB power up, up 
there and a spring here. So although how you get up to this SMB2 power up is entirely open to the level, um, and this is part of a level that I am very soon to upload so I won't go into details on how to solve this one. Um, but you collect that SMB2 mushroom and you can actually go through that door way back there that the player might have forgotten about and feel they've gone into a dead end or maybe even try going through this golden pipe. Yeah, so the trampolines in Mario have an interesting variety of uses ranging from machinery such as the brief show that I gave during this one and also if you go back through previous episodes involving spiny shells or the power-ups uh, you can see some slightly more complex contraptions and how to set them up as well. Um, but it can also be used to directly interact with the player and other components as shown in the first part of the video. My favourite way to use springs is to subvert the expectations of the player by moving them as they go through doors and using them with the SMB2 mushroom uh, to block off doors until you have that SMB2 power up. There are so so many other ways to use trampolines in Mario Maker 2 in troll levels and in regular themed levels um, so there will definitely be a second episode pertaining to the trampolines um, so that'll be around soon um, but it definitely won't be next week because next week we have something quite interesting planned um, so I will be back next week with another episode of Troll School. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.